Thank you everyone. Um, my name is Chandra Haas and uh, I'll be talking about uh, how analytics uh, is slowly uh, crawling into Red Hat OpenStack and how Red Hat OpenStack is slowly starting to facilitate analytics as a service and cluster provisioning as a service. Uh, so here's the agenda. We're going to be discussing all of these. We're going to talk about why predictive analysis is becoming a very important component uh, in every industry. We're going to talk about uh, why private cloud is suitable for big data. We're going to take a look at uh, why Red Hat OpenStack uh, is uh, suitable for big data. Then we'll take a look at OpenStack Sahara, which happens to be a project of OpenStack. Uh, then we'll take a deeper dive into OpenStack Sahara, take a look at the architecture that is existing, and then we look at the various integrations OpenStack Sahara has with the Hadoop ecosystem. So uh, through better, faster, and you know, previously unavailable insight, big data analytics is giving organizations the opportunity to excel in a competitive environment. Uh, achieving this is not easy, but uh, setting up and, uh, and configuring a big data analytics platform, applying the correct data science, and then integrating insights into your business is a it's a complex and time-consuming task, but it's very beneficial for the organization. So uh, what we have here is a couple of industries where uh, big data can you know possibly help with. Uh, you take a look at financial services. You can have something like fraud detection, where you are you know uh, trying to see if there's any anomalies in a person's uh, you know a transaction for example uh, you look at outliers that they are, they are there and you know you try to detect them you can have something like risk management where you see how you know how risky it is to give a person a certain loan based on his previous banking history uh, and then moving on with uh, moving on to utilities you have something like you know analysis of weather for power generation, you can have something like transmission monitoring or, you know, smart grid management where you're seeing if there's, you know, a possible a loophole in the current infrastructure. You get, In transportation, you could possibly have like real-time route optimization or, you know, maintenance optimization and asset tracking. In health and life sciences, you can possibly have like an epidemic early warning system. You know, for example, say if a hospital has, if there's a certain pattern for an epidemic and, you know, you are aware of that pattern, you can uh, point time the, you know, the hospital if there's an exist, uh, if during the early signs of this pattern itself. Or you could have something like ICU monitoring or, you know, remote healthcare monitoring. And uh, for retail, obviously, there's a lot of scope for, uh, you know, data analytics. You could have something like a click stream analysis, say, for example, if you're familiar with how Amazon works, you click on a couple of products and then you start getting similar products. Or, you know, you could have something like real-time promotions where based on your, uh, you know, viewing history or a certain product, you get advertisements related to that. So in the retail industry, especially, there's a lot of scope for uh, predictive analysis. In telecommunications, you could have something like geo-mapping or marketing or, you know, network monitoring. In law enforcement as well, there's a lot of scope, especially with, uh, you know, something like a situation awareness of cyber security detection, noticing patterns and, you know, uh, crime statistics and trying to uh, predict where a possible crime might happen. Manufacturing also has a lot of scope with respect to, uh, say, for example, predictive maintenance, say, uh, you notice, you can analyze patterns and data, you know, with respect to maintenance and you know, uh, perform maintenance before the, you know, uh, breaking down of the component itself. So there's a lot of scope for predictive analysis, but there's also a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, problems that arise as well, a lot of challenges that arise. Uh, some of these challenges would be, for example, setting up and operating a big data and, you know, data analytics platform. There's a lot of, uh, especially when we talk about big data, you're talking about a large amount of data. So there's a lot of data complexity and, uh, you know, operational complexity that comes into the equation uh, and managing this varied production workloads with tight service level, level agreements becomes a massive problem. And, you know, we also have to ensure that you're attracting, managing and applying big data skills. We're talking about specifically uh, ensuring that 
the people that you hire to perform this analysis are focusing more on you know actually performing the analysis analysis and less on say for example deploying the you know tools to perform the analysis itself so that ends up taking a large portion of time which is a you know massive hurdle that this industry <laughs> needs to cross uh you also have something like integrating insights into business processes so just because you have some you know data meaningful information that you've gained from the you know uh, from the analysis doesn't mean that uh the job ends there right you have a lot of uh you know implementation that follows after that so integrating those insights into business process is a challenge as well because you have to ensure that your uh you are integrating whatever outcomes you've gotten from this analysis into your business case and of course iterating quickly enough uh you have it infrastructure is usually limited in terms of scalability because there's hard resource boundaries so uh, there has to be some optimization for you know the it it purchase cycle uh, to ensure that uh, you know there's a business return on investment at the appropriate amount of time and not after the you know work is done so many organizations attempt to design build and operate their own big data infrastructure but uh, following are the issues first is you know uh, then these are hardcore facts uh, knowledge and experience uh, is one of the biggest challenges which is faced by 65% uh, 65.2% of uh, companies that own their own uh, that have their own big data infrastructure skills availability is uh, uh, a challenge of 52.6% companies uh, development effort uh, is uh, you know uh, the amount of technology development and engineering required uh, that challenge is a problem with 40.7% of the companies so there's a lot of challenges that are there with respect to big data especially when you're dealing with complex data and you know you have to maintain a robust and scalable service uh guys can you just mute yourselves yeah thank you so uh especially when you know you're talking about the industry where there's a lot of skill shortage and you know skill retention is a problem uh maintaining uh maintaining a working big data infrastructure becomes a massive problem that needs to be uh you know uh, resolved so why private cloud for big data so uh one of the biggest uh, you know gateways that one needs to take is that when you're dealing with data security is a massive issue you have to ensure that the uh, uh you have to ensure that the data that you are uh, holding is is you know is pro uh, following proper compliance that the data is not uh, cannot be breached in any way because well, i'm sure everybody is familiar with what happened with facebook as well uh once the data is exposed to a third party organization it becomes the liability is on the company itself the company which is maintaining that data so ensuring that you are following and adhering to proper security and compliance is a major uh, you know uh, is a major uh, uh, is a major feature that everybody has to focus on and with a private cloud where the data is stored in the premises itself you don't have to worry too much about it because the data the amount of data you expose is the the data that you work with is limited to the premise itself you're not uh, exposing it to somebody else which becomes a problem when say for example you're using a uh, public cloud like aws where you you know uh, where you're storing all the data yes you still have uh, security standards maintained by aws and yes it's not it's not like you know it's very immediately available but that is still not compliant with respect to you know most uh, security policies that exist ownership obviously is another factor why private cloud is uh, suitable uh, data belongs to you data is with you it's not with anybody else so that obviously is a very big advantage internal network benefits is another but advantage here you know the since the data is within the premises itself processing Uh, whatever network challenges you are facing will uh, or you know whatever latency challenges you might possibly face will not be as much as you know uh, in comparison to say something like hosting your data on some other cloud platform and of course high scale cost savings once you set up your platform 
you are not really uh, investing too much after that so having your own private cloud for your big data uh, you know ecosystem is definitely a, you know it's definitely uh, it's a it's a it's a jump over what everybody else might possibly be looking into so now we've talked about private cloud platforms but why openstack in particular uh, so openstack provides a lot of flexibility scalability and cost effectiveness making it the ideal foundation for your big data platform uh, it provides a simple means to provision a data intensive application cluster on top of your openstack it's very simple to launch a uh, launch a vm on your openstack vm i'm saying but you know slowly throughout the presentation i'll be using a term called instance if you guys are familiar with it instance is basically another term for vm so i might be using that uh, throughout the presentation so tight integration of openstack with hadoop with you know swift as the storage provider optimizes distributed processing of very large data sets so swift happens to be another openstack project uh it's a component or rather it's a service in openstack so uh when you're dealing with data sources and i'll get into that uh, later in the presentation it's uh swift allows you to uh, function as a as a incoming data source and an outgoing data source making things easier for you uh <clears throat> also openstack makes it easy and repeatable to enable an efficient workflow for data exploration so since you are less focused on uh, so there's two aspects to it one is uh, since you are less focused on deploying the uh, apache uh, the hadoop clusters itself and you're focused more on data processing you get a lot more time to explore how you want to analyze your data second being that openstack is uh, openstack sahara is vendor agnostic you can have several uh open uh, hadoop plugins to you know uh, to process your data so that again allows you to uh, you know experiment with that aspect uh <clears throat> flexible storage options since uh, openstack has a lot of storage options for example it has a uh, uh, file and block storage which is being handled by cinder it has a uh, native object uh, which is being handled by uh, Uh, uh which is the obviously the uh, root disk or the fml disk that is there uh, it also has something called swift which is object storage and there's various other uh, file storage technologies that exist within the openstack environment so it makes things easier for the uh, data analyst to focus less on the uh, cluster processing aspect and more on the data analytics aspect of you know things so that is all about openstack red hat openstack is slightly different and i say slightly different but uh, the the uh, architecture might be the same but there is a lot of difference with respect to uh, you know uh, it being enterprise versus it being a uh, uh, enterprise driven versus uh, openstack being uh, you know like uh, primarily open source driven so uh the openstack uh, red hat openstack platform combines all innovation and benefits of community openstack with enterprise grade uh, you know life cycle features so uh, whatever support you need for your cloud environment for your production cloud environment is handled by red hat openstack so uh, it's commercially hardened code it increases uh, stability and eliminates the need to customize and compile code in house so all of that hardening is being performed by red hat uh, and uh, of course uh, red hat stack comes with a lot of integrations you can integrate your open stack with cloud forms you can integrate it with uh, uh, ansible you can integrate it with ansible tableau you can integrate it with red hat enterprise virtualization so there's a lot of integrations that that are possible with red hat open stack uh, of course uh, the, you also have uh, enterprise software life cycle to ensure that Uh, you're getting constant bug fixes and errors for whatever problems you face, and uh, you also have world-class support and services by the uh, provided by Red Hat and a global partner ecosystem. So, uh, it, it, the comprehensive partner ecosystem means you'll be able to add complementary complementary applications and tools to you know your OpenStack environment. and uh, world class support obviously provide they provide consulting training and certification uh, services to their uh, you know partners so uh, red hat openstack is primarily where uh, 
uh, you get you you are uh, ensuring that the bugs that you face in OpenStack are being uh, ironed by Red Hat. So that gives you uh, a little more of uh, uh, you know security in terms of uh, bugs or, uh, or you know uh, whatever issues you're facing with respect to your OpenStack environment. So uh, we've talked about OpenStack a little. We've talked about Red Hat OpenStack, but we've not really discuss discussed what OpenStack itself is. So uh, can somebody quickly tell me what OpenStack is? Anyone? I don't need like I don't need a very clear cut definition. I just need somebody to tell me in simple words what OpenStack is. Any volunteers, guys? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can you speak up louder? Uh, I think yeah. Is it is it uh, clear now? Sorry. Is it clear my voice? Yes. Yes. It's clear. Yeah. Please go on. Uh, I think OpenStack. Uh, it, uh, it means uh, a platform for managing uh, a cloud. Um, platform whether, for managing cloud. Yeah, whether private or public. I think this. Okay. Thank okay. You. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Jalal. Jalal. Okay. So uh, Jalal, um, you're partly right. It's a platform. It's a platform, uh, or you know, it's a cloud computing project. So this platform, what it has is it has a bunch of services which talk to each other. These services, uh, uh, you can mute yourself now, Dilal. OpenStack. Yeah, OpenStack is offered by Rackspace yes. and uh, okay. it's like one of virtualization platform. It's a virtualization platform. Like it's, it's like similar to like VMware. But it is open similar source. to VMware. But it is open source. Okay, fine. Uh, close again. Um, so, um, what? How I define OpenStack is it's a platform which has a bunch of uh, tools which work together to give you a cloud infrastructure. So it's an infrastructure as a service. It allows you to provision VMs or instances, like you mentioned. Uh, with uh, you know, when the back end in the back end, there's a bunch of services which work together to enable that. So, uh, you're right, primarily open source, uh, it'll meet the need of public and private clouds regardless of size. Uh, so what does OpenStack provide? It provides virtual machines or instances on demand, it yeah, provides I virtual have, networks managed. I have a question whether we can, uh, whether we can, uh, uh, install, configure OpenStack on public clouds. You want to uh, configure OpenStack on public clouds. Yes. So, for example, so for example, say you, you have an AWS. You. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm clarifying the question itself. So, say for example, you have uh, an AWS EC2 account, and you want to uh, deploy OpenStack on the EC2 instances that you've created. Is that right? Hello? Yes yes. yes, yes. That is your question, right? Yes. Yes, you can. You can. And uh, um, so that's nested virtualization, but it'll still work. So what you can do is you can install, uh, you can take a RHEL uh, VM or a CentOS VM, and then you can install Packstack on top of it and deploy OpenStack. That is, uh, that'll function perfectly well. That, there's no issue whatsoever with respect to that. Does that answer your question? Uh, 
I am assuming it does. Okay, so uh, it provides virtual machines or incentives on demand. Uh, so uh, that is being facilitated by Nova. You have uh, virtual network management, which is being handled by Neutron. So it allows you to create external networks, internal networks, routers, everything networking related, which is being again handled by Nova. Storage for VMs, which is being handled by uh, Cinder, and arbitrary files, which are being handled by uh, arbitrary files here being you know uh, handled by Object Storage, which is uh, uh, Swift and uh, multi-tenancy. So essentially what uh, uh, multi-tenancy uh, concept says is that there are multiple tenants using the same infrastructure, uh, multi-tenants here being something like projects. So each project is isolated to its own uh, you know, environment, but all of them are on the open, OpenStack infrastructure itself. So that is essentially what multi-tenancy is and OpenStack has a facility for that as well. And uh, orchestration is all about uh, deploying your, uh, you know, for, uh, for pertaining to uh, the uh, cloud nativity aspect of things. You are trying to uh, automate the creation of, say, for example, a stack and then an instance that is being handled by a service on OpenStack called Heat. So there's a bunch of services. I've mentioned some of them. You have Nova, which is in charge of, which is basically dealing with the hyper uh, dealing with it's a hypervisor project which is dealing with uh, just one second so we have a question can different tenants talk to each other uh, can you be more specific with respect to that question do you mean instances in the tenants can talk to each other in different tenants talk to each other yes they can talk to each other uh, so uh, this virtual network management, uh, so uh, going back, we have this uh, various uh, projects that are there. You have Nova, which is uh, dealing with the compute aspect of things, Ionic, which is dealing with the bare metal provisioning. You have Swift, which is essentially in charge of object storage. You have Cinder, which is in charge of block storage. And uh, uh, Manila, which is for shared file systems. You have some uh, Neutron, like I mentioned earlier, which is dealing with networking. Uh, you have Keystone, which is dealing with the identity, the authentication and authorization. You have Glance, uh, which is the image service where you are storing the VM images itself. Uh, you have Heat, which is the orch orchestration service. And finally, you have the uh, dashboard service, which is known as Horizon. So these are all the services that are there in OpenStack. I'm not going to delve too deep into them because uh, that is not the uh, agenda of today's uh, webinar. It's more, it's more legal, it's more uh, centric towards Sahara. So, uh, OpenStack Sahara is a data processing service. It is another service like the ones I've mentioned to you before. Uh, it provides two services. It provides a data processing cluster as a service, and it provides uh, 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 it provides data data analytics as a service as well. So it provides a way for you to deploy data processing clusters with minimum effort from the user itself. You can have uh, users which are, um, you, uh, can you mute your video guys? Uh, sorry, mute your audio. Are there any questions? Okay, so uh, there are two aspects to Sahara. One is that it allows data processing clusters to be deployed with a minimum effort from the user. If you remember, previously I've mentioned that it allows you to, uh, you know, uh, it allows these uh, uh, clusters to be deployed easily and quickly with minimum effort from the user itself. Uh, um, it allows you to create the clusters of various vendor plugins uh, that you know Red Hat OpenStack or OpenStack supports and uh, on top of that it provides the capability to manage the clusters and submit jobs to them so it allows you to check the health of the cluster it allows you to check the validity of the cluster and allows you to submit jobs to the cluster itself so that they can perform the function so we'll, we'll uh, you know take a deeper look at what these jobs itself are so uh, there's a project background it first came up came out in uh, the OpenStack release of Juno 
there were 17 contributors there, there are currently 17 contributors who are working actively on open stack sahara um, so here are some survey numbers 11 percent clouds in production or test ways indicate that they're using sahara three percent are using sahara in production and eight percent in test phase uh, but the interesting number is at the very end, 25% of users indicated they're interested in this project. So uh, that's a that's a lot of people. That's like one in four cloud, uh, uh, you know, uh, cloud environments are you know interested in using Sahara because, like I've mentioned before, there's a lot of challenges that come with come uh, challenges that come with respect to big data analytics, and OpenStack Sahara helps you to you know uh, face these challenges. Uh, to uh, you know overcome these challenges so uh, the key features are this it was initially designed as an it is designed as an open stack component initially uh, you know some services that i mentioned before were uh, de designed as independent services but later they were in integrated into the open stack environment sahara however was designed from the beginning uh, as an open stack component itself uh, it was managed through REST API with a you know UI available as well on the OpenStack dashboard. So most uh, so, uh, most services that run on OpenStack talk through REST APIs itself. So uh, you know Sahara does the same. It uh, you know the uh, OpenStack dashboard talks to the Sahara engine itself through REST APIs and uh, supports for a variety of data processing frameworks. So uh, some of the uh, vendor distributions that are supported are Apache Spark or Storm or you know, uh, Vanilla Apache Hadoop itself or you look at uh, MapReduce or you look at the other data processing ecosystems that are there. Uh, OpenStack tends, uh, tends to support a lot of them. Uh, you have pluggable systems of uh, Hadoop and installation en engines. So, uh, so this comes into my previous point as well. Uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, pluggable systems that you can, uh, or uh, vendor plugins that you can integrate with your uh, OpenStack Sahara and conversely your OpenStack environment as well. Uh, it also supports integration with vendor specific management tools. So Apache Ambari and uh, Cloudera Management Console are, uh, you know, management platforms for your uh, data processing clusters. So uh, OpenStack Sahara supports integrations with those as well. So one of the benefits with uh, OpenStack Sahara is that there's predefined configuration templates uh, that you can use to deploy your clusters quickly. So I will get into very soon about what these templates itself are, but uh, trust me, these uh, configuration templates that are there are very useful to uh, uh, customize your uh, data processing clusters itself. So let's do a quick overview of all the components that are there. Uh, data cluster here being data processing cluster. Node group template is, uh, it describes a group of nodes within the cluster itself. So uh, it contains a list of processes that will be launched on each instance in a group. So uh, for example, uh, say you, you typically have a master and a slave node and you have certain processes that you want to uh, associate with your master node and certain that you want to associate with your slave node. Uh, so this uh, this customization is happening on the node group template itself. It provides a node scope configuration for these processes. Uh, and also the uh, it, it is in charge of the hardware parameters to the node instance that you want to assign and configure. It also is in charge of configuration for data processing framework running on the node. So that is all those processes are inside the node group template itself. Uh, a cluster template is designed to bring node group templates together to form the cluster itself. So a cluster template defines what node, node groups will be included and how many instances will be created for each. And then some data processing uh, framework configurations, uh, for example, cannot be you know, apply to a single node, but they have to be applied to a whole cluster. So that is also being taken care of by the cluster template. Uh, so for example, say you're, uh, uh, you're deploying an Apache Storm 1.1.0. Uh, so you will have a node group template uh, for the master slave, uh, for the master, a node group template for the slave, but you will also have a cluster template which will contain these two node group templates. So that is basically a gist of how the cluster is deployed. And then uh, 
uh, you have jobs jobs are essentially uh, like an object that specifies you know uh, it's essentially the object that you get when you launch a job template itself so um, i'll get into what job templates and all those are but uh, uh, let's look at data source first a data source is essentially uh, where the input and output from your jobs are housed so typically data uh, sources can be something like swift swift it can be something like cinder so this is where you know you 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 are storing the input file or the input data and as well as where the output or, or outgoing data is going to be stored uh, uh, a job uh, so there's two aspects here there's a job binary and the job uh, that's supposed to be two different points a job binary object stores the url or the single script that is going to be run on the job it, uh, that is going to be run when you uh, uh, you know run the job itself so for example say uh, there's a jar file which is going to be used to uh, perform the processing on your data source itself that is where you're going to specify that is being specified in your job binary itself job like i mentioned is what you get when you launch the job template so uh, these are all the aspects of job uh, there's one more thing that is mentioned there which is known as edp edp is you know sara's uh, elastic data processing facility uh, it allows the execution of jobs on clusters created from sara so uh, uh, edp supports hive pig map reduce uh java and shell job types that is being that is the job binary essentially uh it uh, is in charge of access to input and output data sources in hdfs or swift or manila depending on you know where you want to store your job it is also in charge of configurations of job the submission time it is in charge of execution of jobs and existing clusters or you know uh, transient clusters so all that all the data sources job uh, binary uh, job binary and jobs and templates are being stored in edp itself so uh, this is how the sahara architecture looks like uh, we've discussed in brief the other projects that are there we've discussed uh, keystones horizon and uh, heat for example swift and all of that but we'll go a little bit in depth as we look at the basic you know uh, aspect of how all of these talk to each other so horizon uh, has the sahara dashboard itself the data processing dashboard it provides the gui with you know uh, all the sahara features that are there uh, keystone authenticates users it's, it's in charge of authentication and authorization and provides security tokens that are used to work with openstack uh, compute on nova is used to provision the vm for data processing clusters uh, that's over here um and uh, Uh, bare metal or ionic is in charge of uh, provisioning bare metal nodes for the data processing cluster itself you have uh, orchestration which is managed by heat which is used to orchestrate uh, the deployment of data processing clusters uh, you have the uh, image service which is glance which stores the vm images uh, you have object storage which is being handled by swift where you can we can uh, store your input and output data uh, so you have block storage which can be used to provision block storage for the vm instances uh, networking is being handled by neutron and uh, telemetry or ciliometer is used to collect measures of cluster usage check the validity check the health of the cluster itself so i say for example you want to deploy a cluster uh, you go to sahara's uh, data processing uh, section and you click on launch cluster so that talks to the sahara python client to rest api if you remember rest apis or how every project talks to each other so you have an rest api which is uh, talking to the provisioning engine if you can see the io that's connecting rest api to provisioning engine so provisioning engine is actually in charge of uh, deploying the clusters itself deploying the clusters the which contains the master node and the slave node and you know what not so provisioning engine talks to heat heat in turn talks to nova glance in the neutron and uh, you know that allows you to deploy your cluster in the openstack compute node so uh, the data access layer is connected to sql cloud database every uh, project has a database of its own uh, so here also there's an sql cloud database and uh, if you look at uh, rest api which is also talking with edp 
which contains a job binaries and job templates so once you're done deploying your cluster okay you want to perform a job on this cluster your uh, your sahara dashboard is where you will provide all the details pertaining to it i will get into the workflow a little more in depth in the next slide uh, the rest api talks to your job, job binaries and job templates uh, which allows you to uh you know which allows you to perform the job itself you have the data source from where you're fetching the uh, uh incoming data source as well as the outgoing data source and that is what you know edp is doing as uh, doing over here and if you notice the vendor plugins which are essentially all the plugins that openstack sahara supports so like we've discussed sahara supports a, a bunch of uh, clusters uh, a bunch of plugins sorry like uh, ambari and uh, uh, storm and spike and you know a lot of others we'll get into that as well a little later so uh, edp supports all of that and uh, uh, edp talks to these vendor plugins to perform the job itself and, uh, and depending on the configuration as well you have bypican which comes into the equation which is a key management service so uh, that is with respect to you know the the basic architecture of things we'll take a deeper look into the workflow so uh for example say you are uh, for for you're deploying a cluster with a generic workflow uh what happens is you will select a hadoop version first or which framework you want to use uh you will select a base image with or without pre installed data processing framework uh you will select the uh, once the base image has been selected sahara will support uh, sahara will check if you know the uh, plug will deployment in the in engines are integrated with vendor tooling once that is done you are defining the cluster configuration for example the cluster size the topology and the framework parameters that you want to add uh to ease the configuration of such parameters uh you already have some default templates that you could possibly use then you uh, provision the cluster Where Sahara will provision the nodes, will install and configure the data processing framework, uh, and perform operations on the cluster. For, for example, you can add or delete nodes, or you, you can uh, check the health of the cluster itself. And finally, if you want to terminate the cluster, you can terminate the cluster as well. So all of this comes under the cluster provisioning aspect of Sahara. Then you also have the analytics as a service uh, aspect of Sahara as well. Uh, you have uh, so you select one of these uh, uh, clusters that has already been defi defined uh, already been provisioned sorry and then uh, one of the predefined uh, data processing framework versions is selected then you configure the job itself where you choose the type of job for example if you want to uh, you know if if it, if it has to be a big big latin script that you want to use or a jar file where you know which is going to perform the data processing and uh, you will provide the job script source or the location of the job itself and you will select the input and the output data source so where is that you know data source itself located and where where do you want the uh, you know data to be stored once you process it or the output to be stored once you process it then you will set the limit for the cluster size how many worker nodes you want to perform the function and then once you're done with that you will uh, you know execute the job itself so all uh, uh cluster provisioning and job execution that is happening is is can be viewed by the user but is being handled by sahara itself so you are left with simply worrying about the job that you are deploying which means the job binary that you know you will be uh, uh the you will be uh, pushing into the sahara ecosystem itself so that makes things easier for uh Uh, for you know for your big data analyst analyst because he doesn't have to worry about the cluster and the, you know the health of the cluster how many worker nodes he has to uh, provision or how many are there if the job will run or not so all of that is being handled by sahara so he just has to worry about the uh, analyzing aspect of his uh, work itself so uh, once the job itself has finished executing uh, uh, if it's a transient cluster it will be removed automatically after job job completion and you know you can get the results of computation from swift which you mentioned as for example if you mention swift it'll be you know it'll end up on swift which becomes the output data source itself so why open stack we've discussed some of these points 
but uh, to to dig deeper into it uh, openstack zahara is scalable which means that you can scale the number of nodes that you want to uh, you know invoke it is resilient you can check the uh, you can check the health or the status of the job uh, you can check the health and status of the cluster itself to ensure that uh, there is no sort of uh, problems that are arising with respect to the vms that you provision it is very easily manageable uh, the uh, sahara interface is very easy to use and it allows you to quickly deploy clusters based on your requirement uh, it is modular which means that you are providing a lot of abstractions in several layers in several aspects of the entire process so that you can quickly identify where the problem is and solve it it is interoperable we've talked about this it you know uh, uh sahara can work with a lot of data sources it can work with a lot of vendor plugins which makes it very easy to use uh and of course security um we've talked about this when the data is located on premise you are uh, you are you know you are already complying to a lot of security policies that one might possibly not adhere to if they are going for a public cloud so that is respect that is with respect to security uh with respect to user experience like i mentioned sahara makes it very simple to deploy clusters uh it allows you to uh it allows you to uh, you know uh, provision clusters quickly and uh, provision clusters easily it allows you to cluster customize the uh it allows you to customize the clusters that you are deploying to node group templates and uh, cluster templates itself so that is the aspect to why open stack sahara so uh, these are the possible open stack sahara integrations that are there so um, the quick note this is for red hat open stack sahara open stack sahara itself has a lot of other integrations that it supports this is with respect to only red hat open sahara, open stack sahara uh there's a bunch of different plugins for provisioning specific clusters of each hadoop distribution uh parameters available for configuring clusters depend on the hadoop distribution itself um so as of this release as of rocky these are the uh, various uh, plugins that are uh, supported by red hat open stack sahara again i'm being very specific i'm saying red hat open stack sahara because open stack sahara uh, supports excuse me other integrations as well but uh, from my personal experience for example when i have used rdo uh, some of the other plugins are extremely buggy uh, i have struggled with vanilla uh, vanilla apache hadoop i struggled with apache spark so uh, a lot of those plugins are extremely buggy on the other hand red hat open stack sahara does not face such issues uh, you have cloud era you have hortonworks you have map reduce which are all supported by red hat open stack sahara and allows you to you know use this in the production environment itself so um i'm going to show you a quick demo with respect to you know uh my okay so there seems to be a bunch of questions okay so what about resource manager is it available like yarn and hadoop uh i'm not sure prasanna about that that is something that i'll have to look into um john snow some component services like maps are capable of managing their own cluster is it a good idea to bring sahara in there uh so uh, again you're talking about uh, an important aspect here which is that uh, when you when we talk about deploying the cluster itself there is a lot of work that goes into it clusters typically are not scalable uh, but red hat open stack sahara provides a functionality to scale your clusters a b uh, it makes deployment very easy so yes it is uh, you know it is definitely especially when you're talking about these uh, you know these integrations it is uh, supported for the uh a production environment itself so for these integrations certainly open stack sahara can support and you know support these uh, plugins that you mentioned so uh here is uh, an apache storm cluster that we set up uh this has possibly three nodes and uh 
okay my screen hold on guys i just share my screen so this is a, a storm cluster that we've uh, uh, set up um, i ran it sometime back so it's checking the health right now to ensure that everything is working properly so i can access the cluster right now as you can see and uh, if there's any jobs that i want to perform i can perform jobs over here as well so like i mentioned red hat uh, rdo open stack or normal vanilla open stack supports a lot of other plugins as well these are not recommended and are not supported by red hat open stack and that is for a very good reason uh, a lot of these are still uh you know they still require a lot more maturity maturity before they can be start before you can start using it you know uh, for your production environment so storm happens to be one of those i've just deployed it for the sake of this uh, uh demo um you have cluster templates like i've mentioned containing all the default cluster templates uh so we view storm 110 default clusters uh you have node group templates which contains the master node templates and the slave node templates you have an image registry which is going to contain the big images that we are going to uh, use to deploy these uh, vms itself so uh one one aspect that i've forgotten to mention is that you can't just take a centos image and then uh, plug it in and you know expect the hire to do the job you have to bake the Im images first before you can deploy them but uh, openstack sahara has uh, inbuilt commands which allow you to bake the images so for example say you're deploying a storm cluster uh, with version 1.1.0 you will have to bake the image with the pre uh, pre config you have to bake a pre configured image which can be used to deploy the pro uh, uh, deploy or provision the vm itself so sahara uh, so openstack sahara has a functionality which helps you bake these images itself but you can't just you know you can't just plug in the images and expect it to work you have to bake the images like you know i just told you uh so any more questions guys guys any question okay ah uh, see that's that's something that we have not tested but uh, i mean if you're using the plugins that are being provided by adhat certainly as long as you have the compute power so um, this i this is something that i uh, actually uh, looked up and uh, you know uh, checked so uh, in terms of the uh, processing efficiency that is there between say deploying a normal cluster as a cluster to on bare metal as opposed to deploying a cluster on sahara with the right configurations you can get up to 0. 94 which is about 94% efficiency you know uh efficiency of the of the typical cluster that you're processing so for example if you uh okay one second mayur so uh you can have up to 94% efficiency with uh, open stack sahara so um i i mean uh at this moment with the correct configurations yes it is certainly possible to emulate the performance of a bare metal uh, you know a bare metal uh, provisioning of uh, uh, of uh, apache hadoop ecosystem that is definitely possible but it has to be configured to make it work it doesn't come of of the box of the shelf uh, can you once open data base and data processing and talk to me database is with respect to dro mayu that is not within the scope of this webinar uh, but this is the drop down for data processing you have clusters which is which has all everything to do with the cluster deployment that is there uh, you have plugins which 
shows the list of uh, you know uh, plugins that are supported by IDEO OpenStack. And then you have jobs where you can deploy the job itself. So you put a, for example, you there's a job guide over here which you can possibly look into uh, once you have some free time. Uh, I'll link some uh, reference material for you as well. So you can uh, create your own job on this uh, Apache Storm uh, cluster that we've provisioned and you know, uh, you can get the desired output. Any other questions? There? So, uh, so no, I I wouldn't. That's a comparison. I've not looked into uh, John Snow. I'm not too sure how uh, how much more efficient Sahara is with respect to EMR. Um, that's certainly something possibly you can you know hopefully enlighten us on. Uh, you know possibly with an email. Okay, great. Any other questions, guys? 